First, my name is Kevin. Started that off with I'm the uh, owner of Crystal Edge Technology Screens, and our screen paints are Supreme Ambulant Rejection Screen Paint 12 and the new 17. One of the things I haven't done enough of when it comes to the uh, black silvers, usually when I show off the black silver, it's our gray screen paint. Um, like I said, we make darker screen paints as in we have the platinum eclipse, that's a real dark gray screen. Uh, we have the, um, the, um, the uh, 12s, which are the black screens, and the gold, which is the gold 12 now. But I really don't talk a lot when it comes to the black silver. So black silver is considered to be our bottom dollar screen, like a white screen would be a bottom dollar screen. This is considered to be our white screen. But I want to show you something because I have not, I just pulling out the, just what I just saw a few minutes ago, I had to come back and just do a video on this alone. And this is just, like I said, live demonstration, just to back up that we now have the best gray screen paint on the market. And I'll show you why. As I told you before, before we start this, that the black silvers have special codes in them to allow them to pull up a contrast level. And you see how gray that screen is compared to my black screen? Hey, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. See how gray that screen is? Look how much you look at that screen. Just stare at it. How gray that screen is. See how gray it is? All right. Now. take our high performance sample sheets. I want to show you how dark they are. There we go. Pale X by Daylight Screens, which I got to get me another sample of that one. Dark Star 9. And then we have the uh, Blade by DMP Supernova. Now, this is what I'm going to show you. Look how gray the screen is. Stare at it. Projector we're using behind us is a 720p projector. Oh, that's the demonstration I was doing later on showing how our screens reflect better than white screens. We can pull images in for the environments, da da da. Anyway, so we got a projector with 20,000 to one contrast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the gray screen and we're gonna stick it up here like so. All right, get it in there like so. No, I already have three offers in 2021 to buy me out already because of that 17 that was displayed. Told you two ways they're going to get rid of me. Either they're going to buy me out or they're going to figure out another way basically to have me work for them. I ain't working for them. I'm trying to retire. See how black the contrast level is? That screen is gray and it can pull contrast level that dark. So how is that possible for a screen to be that gray but pull a contrast level that black? Because it's code in the screen, that's why. That's why I've been explaining to people for the longest time, over and over again. Everybody's still stuck on the surface. It's beyond the surface. doesn't start there it starts will come out of that projector that's what comes out of there and then makes contact with the screen the thing is can the screen read contrast let's take dark star nine much darker than my screen right Daylight screen. Boom. Whoa! And that just landed right on my projector, which opens up broken. Ah, it happens. Ah. Okay. 
careful. Land it directly on my projector. Ah, uh, let me explain something to you. I had a $3,000 projector sitting on a stand, like so. Did a demonstration, it fell over and it broke on camera. So like I said, stuff happens on camera. So don't care. The bottom line is that my 17, well, here's the thing. The 21s may never make it to customers. And I'll tell you why. Because there's a company in Germany that saw that technology take a direct hit from sunlight and they're interested now in buying the technology. And what would that screen cost that can take a direct hit from sunlight? $20,000 for a hundred inch. Twenty grand for a hundred inch. That took a direct hit from sunlight. So right here we have our gray technology producing a contrast level. I love when the crow boys go. Oh, I forgot. They don't exist anymore. That's done and over with. That's all been canceled out now. So you guys don't even really exist anymore. Too bad. But anyway, this is just a rub it in your face. Look at that gray screen pulling that contrast level. So how is that possible that my gray screen here is pulling a contrast level and looks this amazing? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me show you what ambient light rejection technology looks like. That's what ambient light rejection technology looks like. That's the 17 blue re-engineered to be able to take on light in a fully lit environment against white sheets of paper. You couldn't even do that. Could you? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me show you something else real quick. There you go. See how much light is pushing through my environment? Can't even do that. Like I said, any one of you naysayers that feel you could do the same demonstration, post it at the bottom. I look forward to seeing your demonstrations. If not, then keep it shut. As a matter of fact, you could do this demonstration right here. We have the parallax right here, daylight screen right here. We got a DMP supernova right here. Question, what company is DMP supernova designed by? Screens here. Let me see if someone can pop it up. Well, look, if you can do better, just post it at the bottom. As a matter of fact, you could do that demonstration that we did with direct sunlight hitting the screen, the sun killer. Do that same demonstration, post it tomorrow. We look forward to seeing it. And I said direct hit from sunlight. I wasn't stuttering. I'm gonna put you in a timeout until you bring up the video. All right, so let's begin. Let's see, we're going to do a star field. There's a star field demonstration on my gray screen. Against what? One, two, three, four certified screens. Would you like me to bring up a 2017, uh, sorry, 2021 technology? Cause you know we got three of them downstairs right now and that technology is so crazy it's unbelievable have you seen the new black screen that we have that's so dark it's actually three shades darker than 12s and they pull insane white levels oh you're so behind so how we got a gray screen here that's pulling a contrast level on several screens that are much darker than my technology Let's go with um, bah, 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 bah.
and that's our bottom dollar screen. Those, this, um, the black, um, black silvers are considered to be our white screens. Mm. Goodbye. So our white screens can outperform screens of three thousand to five thousand dollars, fourteen hundred dollars screens, and this right here is just our, our, um, our um, what do you call it? Just our um, bottom dollar screens. So, like I said, you know, for those of you hobbyists who develop gray screen paints, I look forward to doing the exact same demonstration which I just displayed. You can display a gray screen producing a contrast level that's black, not gray, black. Also do, I would like to see you do the four certified projection screens. Now, DMP Supernova, you may have to email them. They require $20 for their sample. Daylights is actually free. Um, between uh, the elite screens, you can actually have to pay for those. But I look forward to seeing your demonstration in two days at the bottom of this video. Now, mind you, this is also too broadcasted on Facebook and other forms, site media sites, I'm on, and they also look forward to seeing your challenge also. Of course, all of those on Facebook, I'm pretty sure you're gonna look forward to seeing those demonstrations displayed at the bottom of this video. Especially the fellow who said he can uh, duplicate sun killer technology. Oh, I'd love to see that one. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting you would say that because no one's ever matched any of my demonstrations. So if it's such a hobby and it's so easy to do, you would have no problem doing the same demonstration, right? So like I said, duplicate the video and post it at the bottom. Don't talk, do the video. I'm not trying to be hearing you talk, do the video. So what I'm asking you to do. I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't want to hear about this, that, and the other. Just do the video. That's all. And we'll look at it tomorrow. I'll come back here tomorrow. For demonstration. Going to this video. We'll see how many people post. Oh, just to let you know that when you post, it is being reviewed by me and YouTube. So be careful what you post on there. I mean, I want to see it. I'm curious. You said you can take a, show me a video of direct hit from sunlight. As a matter of fact, I'll post the link of the video demonstration so you can see it before you actually step into that challenge. Eh, time out for you. You don't sound too bad. All right. Let's come out of here for a minute. I mean, come on, you're going to talk all this nonsense about how your technology so good, yet I can sit here in a fully lit environment, I can see my screen with no problem. That's what my customers get. Can you do that? You can't do that. I have screens throughout my entire house. I don't have TVs in here. Security monitors, that's basically about it. But all my screens in my house, all projection screens. You don't have that. Because you gotta sit in the dark. When I can sit here in a fully lit environment, you see that light pushing through my window right now? That's my screen right there. With all that light pushing through my window. You naysayers are sitting in the dark watching my videos. You're upset, you're biting your bottom lip and you're trying to figure out exactly where your coffee boy is at. You don't bang your knees on it because you're sitting in the dark. Look at this. See this? It's 190 degree viewing angle. I can kiss my screen with my camera. Fully lit environment. You know why that screen can do that? Because unlike you, you sit in a dark environment, high end projectors. And I'm outside doing demonstrations on a thousand lumens at 13 feet back. That's why you can see my screen there crystal clear. 
Would you like me to turn the projector on for the ceiling? Because the ceiling has a projection screen too, you know that, right? Did you know that? Here, I'll show you an even more impressive demonstration. How about this one? We'll turn, hmm, first things first, let's go to this one real quick. Let's put up um, Funny Fish YouTube. Now, I just showed you a gray screen producing a contrast level dark enough to be able to pull up a contrast level next to multiple certified screens. Right? Because that screen right there is gray. Give you a little chance. See, I opened up the channel to give you a little chance to talk, and you still don't come back with anything intelligent at all. I'll give you a little bit. Open my channel just a little bit to give you a chance to talk, and you still have nothing intelligent to say to me. This is not my customers. My customers are freaking amazing. I love you guys, but the naysayers have nothing to say. All they can do is just hate. That's all you're going to be able to do. So let's do this right here. Let's remove my gray screen here, right? Let's put it over here. All right. So that right there is the 12. 12s are supposed to be so dark that you can't even see them. I think that's what it was said, right? They're so dark you can't see them. Can you see that? Naysayers? Or maybe if I, if I turn to the side, can you see it now? Can you still see my screen with the light in it? Can you see it? All right, just wondering. Now, you can see this is a gray screen, right? This right here is a gray screen, right? Nice and gray screen. And that right over there is a black screen. I wonder if the white levels are so high enough on that black screen. If I take this gray screen and lay it against it, will it blend in? Let's find out. What do you know? Isn't that interesting? Let me walk in front of it real quick. Turn back. And again. And here. And again. Isn't that interesting how they're two different colors, but yet the black screen is pulling a high enough white level to be able to blend into the gray screen. You want to get a little closer? How close to you would you like to get on the camera? Come on, man. Don't question my technology, please. I was developing your light gray screen paints way back in 2010. Cakewalk. I got blue projection screens that can produce color. I got screens that can take direct hit from sunlight. I got screens that can produce images. One demonstration, a screen at 180 inches black screen at 6 o'clock in the evening pulled an image. I even have demonstrations of silver technology that I designed a 50 lumen projector to take on a 1080p TV. We have three challenges out there floating around. None of them have been matched. What about the ultimate 1100 lumen challenge? Never matched. It's been out there since 2019. 50 lumen challenge outside, eight feet on a Pico projector, never been challenged. The sun killer, never been challenged. So before you come on here and run your mouth, match my demonstration and then get back with me. Till then, you fall on deaf ears. That's why I open up my channel from time to time, just to hear you talk. Oh, yeah, that's a 17 right there. That's a new technology we developed. Oh, by the way, naysayers, just so you know this, I have three screens downstairs. Keep in mind, one of them was only up. Let's go back. The black one, the ultra black, and the black slate were developed in one hour. The screens, and I'll put the link so you can watch them. One hour it took to develop that technology. Let me tell you something even more impressive. Even more impressive. The screens at 2% beat 11 screens certified. 
do the same demonstration, match any one of my demonstrations. Like I said, any demonstration that I do, which is a simple demonstration, is a challenge for the naysayers. And this is not just a hobby, it's to make screen paints that sit in the dark all day and do these demos, don't want to do demonstrations on this level. This is for the big companies, everybody. That screen is three times darker than a 12. And look at the white level on that technology next to a white screen. You can watch this or you can watch that. Doesn't make a difference. See, that's the funny thing about it is that when I have people come and want to hate on me, you don't realize that you're watching the demonstration live. You're watching my blackest screen be able to produce high white levels like a white screen. And then you're watching my 12 over here blend into a gray screen. You watch my gray screen over here pull contrast level better than four certified screens. You're watching my 17 blue in a fully lit environment, well, actually only for the environment, let's say, well, ambient light environment, sitting in a bit of windows, performing in images looks absolutely incredible. My screen upstairs in my lounge, upstairs in my bedroom, is producing an image right now with the windows open. Well, if you can do it for $50, post a demonstration. That's all you gotta do. Do the demonstration, post at the bottom. Don't say it. I'm gonna say this to you one more time to your naysayers. Don't say it, post it at the bottom. Post it at the bottom. Don't say it, post it. I don't wanna hear about how you can make it for 50 bucks. I don't wanna hear how you can make it for 60 bucks. I don't wanna hear this blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Make it and show the demonstration. And I don't need that demonstration. If you're gonna say that you can actually duplicate a 12, then keep in mind that I want to see all 30 demonstrations under 12's test done perfectly. If not, then, eh, wasting my time. I love it when people sit there and say, oh, but I can do the same thing. Well, you know, the screens have 30 tests on them, so you have to complete all 30 tests. And they're not just all done on, oh, I forgot to tell you, do it, I forgot to tell you. It's a 720p projector, 600 by 800 res we're doing in the demonstration. I'm sorry, look at that. See how black that screen is? Look at the white level on that technology. That's pulling up next to a white screen. Look how bright that image is. No, you don't even come close, my friend. You need for me to pause that for you to show you that you see how dark this screen is you couldn't even begin to understand how technology works the problem is you're still thinking it's all about the surface and it has nothing to do with the surface it goes deeper than the surface like I said, if you want to be on my level, then you need to start cracking open some books. You need to go on Google and start cracking open some books or study something called physics. Study physics. Study uh, physics of light and energy. That's what you need to do. Drop five years into it. Then you can get back with me. Because now you got to figure out how that screen is. That jet black and it's sitting there next to a white screen and it's producing a bright enough image right next to a white screen. Is maintaining contrast and white levels at the same time. Ooh, I love my work. Bye bye. All right, people, I had fun. I'm telling you. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta do this real quick. We gotta do this one right here. We gotta, do this. We gotta take this one down. I haven't even brought up the ultra brights. You haven't even seen that ultra bright silver we developed. That screen is freaking insane. 
take this screen and let's stick this back over here. All right. How about we put the gray screen back over there and see how that pulls up? Oh, wait, it pulls up a contrast level. It's black now. Oh, it's black now, but it wasn't black a few minutes ago. It was gray, wasn't it? I could have swore that screen was gray. So how is it black now? Wait a minute. No, 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 no. That screen was just a few minutes ago. Let me see something for a minute. I know that screen was basically a few minutes ago. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gray, right? Or is it black? Which one is it? It looks black to me, doesn't it? Doesn't it look a black screen? Oh, naysayers, you can't figure out how that's done. How is it possible a few minutes ago that screen just displayed gray? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's check that again. Let's go back and check that again. Because I could have swore that screen was gray. That's a gray screen, right? Isn't that gray? That's a gray projection screen. So how is a gray projection screen producing a contrast level that black? Hold on, hold on, wait, wait. Let's do, let's do this first. Let's do this first. Let's do this first. Let's go over and let's try, see if, oh, if any other gray screen does the same thing. So let's go to, let's go to the Dark Star 9. Let's take the Dark Star 9, right? Look how black that looks. Let's see what happens. Let's take the Dark Star 9. We'll put it right here. Right? Oops. Hello, phony. We'll put it right here. Got it. That looks black, don't it? So maybe my screen has the same technology as a dark stir knot, right? Because it's producing the black contrast level, right? It is a gray screen, right? And it is much darker than mine. Okay. So I bet if I put this screen against my screen, they should blend together and be the same amount of darkness, right? Right? Okay, let's find out if that's true or not. So let's take this off. And let's take my screen over here, which is a gray screen. And let's stick that right here. All right. There we go. But it's black again. All right, so let's see. Let's see if the dark star and I will put the dark star and I right next to it. Right there. It's interesting, isn't it, that my screen is pulling up a much blacker contrast level than the Dark Star 9 and sitting right next to it. But the Dark Star 9, when laying against the white screen, looked dark, right? So you would think any gray screen would be able to do that, right? If you lay that against, it would be the same thing. But how is it possible that my screen's lighter than the Dark Star 9 and it's pulling a heavier contrast level? Hmm. Let's try this one. Let's put it against my screen and let's see what happens. Let's see if they blend in together. Did it again. It happens. Gotta make sure it stays this time. All right, so let's see. And this is probably God teaching me right now to be so arrogant because right now I'm becoming extremely arrogant. Oh, it happens, big deal. Like, that's going to bother me. Something falls. I have tripped over things in the middle of the set. I've actually fallen into screens. I've actually had a pet sprayer explode on me. So, yeah, it happens. But at the end of the day, no matter how many mistakes or what I might trip on camera, at the end of the day, I have technology that you will never, ever be able to understand how it works. And at the end of the day, this will make me a very rich man. Because I already have companies already filling up my email accounts with trying to get access to this technology. Because you know why? That screen paint right there cost my customers $98, and that screen is $3,000. Know that. Up close. That, that has to scratch. See, the funny thing about it is I couldn't care about the screen phone over and over again. That's what bothered me. At the end of the day, you can't figure out how it's done. How in the world is he presenting a screen that is extremely lighter than the screen he just displayed, but up close, if you look at it, it doesn't even match. 
So how is this screen doing that? So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Home Depot and Lowe's. You're going to buy all these paints and mix them together and try to duplicate the same thing I'm doing. And you're going to fail over and over again and again. Your video will never be posted at the bottom. And you will understand eventually it goes deeper than that. It's more than just mixing different household products and paints together. This science involved to learn how to break things down and start from the beginning of elements. You have to understand how elements work and how they actually interact with each other, which you call fusions. You know how cooking works? When you take one element from cooking, like you take sugar, and if you cook it or if you heat it up or if you cool it down, it breaks down that element, turns it to a whole different form of a formula. You know that? Anything when you cook, whether you heat it up or whether you cool it down, it basically alters and changes the, um, the, uh, the actual design of that formula or that structure. So you have to go deeper than that. See that whole mixing paint back and forth? That's old technology. That's the old stuff. Clouded, junky, muddy dirt. That's what it is. That's why you can't figure out how in the world I got a screen sitting here while I'm talking to you. I'm having this conversation with the naysayers and talking to you, and you're watching my screen produce that image in a fully lit environment. Oh, matter of fact, I feel like they're fully lit, right? I'm all start on that. There we go. Now we're in a full environment. Let's finish the conversation. See how I can jump from level, level to level? I can talk to you while my screen sits in an environment with just window light and then come in and flick my lights on just like that and boom, my screens activate with no problem. My friend, let me understand. Let me tell you this right from the door. Eventually, you'll get there and you will get there. Not saying you can't do it. Oh, you can do it. It can. But the way you go about thinking on how it's done is what's blocking you. That's the problem. You're blocked by tradition. And that's why you'll never figure it out. Once you get past that point of understanding that has nothing to do with the surface, then you will understand what I'm talking about. Until then, you won't be to duplicate anything. Look at that. You're stuck in tradition. That's why you can't figure it out. Now look, screen's gray right there. But now the black screen's producing a high enough white level to blend into the gray screen. But if I take the gray screen, and I stick it back against here, then what do we get? We get a contrast screen. Starfield demonstration. It's just hard. All you gotta do is just basically work at it. But the problem is the fact that you're so busy hating with the negativity. You can't get anywhere with negativity. You can't get there at all, period. Demonstration. At the end of the day, my technology will get better and better and more advanced and more advanced. And while you guys are still trying to figure out how 12s are working, we are now in 17s. In the middle of 17s, we're designing it. We're actually working on a screen called a 21 and on. There you go. Isn't that interesting? I'll be back in this series.
get this straight. You're mad at me because I get up every morning. I work hard. I built and constructed my company from the ground up. But I asked a loan from anybody and did it myself. And you're mad at me? Now that sounds like a lot like jealousy to me. There you go. That's my screen on my ceiling right there. Right there in the middle. With a ceiling fixture right in the middle of it. That's my technology right there. Before you start talking about ambulant rejection, you need to start wondering how in the world is this brother got a screen on his ceiling with a light fixture in the middle of it. Uh. End of the day, it's not my problem whether you're upset, whether you're angry with me, I don't care. It's basically about me giving the best to my customers. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. If you feel you can do better, go do better. That's what you need to do. Don't worry about what I'm doing over here. It's none of your business. Goodbye. It's none of your business what I do over here. If you don't buy my product, you don't support my company, then you shouldn't be in here to begin with. You're in here because you're jealous and you're upset and you can't figure out how in the world is he doing all this. It's called hard work and prayer, buddy. And if you ain't got either one, you ain't going to accomplish it. Don't get mad at me. You know why we asked to do the Starfield demonstration? Because when I was developing the gray screens, actually, we weren't even in gray screens at this particular time. We kept asking that people who did our gray screens, let's see side-by-side -side demonstrations. I want to see the gray screen with multiple other gray screens. I want to see Starfield demonstrations. I want to see contrast level. The problem that I have with gray screens is the fact that they don't produce proper contrast levels, proper reds and blues and greens and stuff like that. They don't do that. And majority of all the demonstrations I see on gray screens, it's the same thing. These bright, beautiful colors and these environments, they stay far away from contrast levels because they know the screens are going to fail. So if you can't do the job correctly, I'll come and do it for you. So I've been asking over again, start the demonstration. Hardest screen to part, hardest um, demonstration to pull up is a start the demonstration because it's nothing but strictly contrast. So if you're trying to say that your great technology is just as good as everybody else, then you should be to show me a Starfield demonstration or a black contrast demonstration off your gray screen. I don't want to see bright, beautiful colors. I don't want to see all that. I want you to show me something that the screen is not going to be able to do, and that's show a contrast level. That's why I can come in here live. That's why I can show you a demonstration on my gray screen producing a contrast level dark enough to look like it matches my ceiling and my screen at the same time. When y'all stay far away from these demonstrations, and I watch your demonstrations, trust me, I watch your ambient light controlled environments. You see my environment right here? You see how well lit that is? Please take notice to the screen that's on my ceiling that has a light fixture in the center of it. And while that screen is taking on all that light, these screens right here are taking on the same amount of light at the same time. That's what you don't notice when you watch my demonstrations. Or you come in here with a bunch of hatred and you're upset and you're angry. At the end of the day, you know what it displays? It displays jealousy. That's what it comes out to looking like. You're jealous. And I'm sorry if you feel that way, Skippy, but that again, like I said, at the end of the day, that's not my problem. That's your problem. Like I told you, the first time I got hands on some black diamond technology, I didn't go all hate mode on them. No, I tried to reconstruct and better my technology to be able to either compete with them or do better than them. These are the same people when you contact that will go on and on about their birthday. No one remembered my birthday. So whining and crying about everything. Do something about it. Work at something for God's sakes. That's the difference between you and me. I was raised old school and military. I was raised to get it done or don't do it at all. Not to whine and cry about something. So as I said before, we put that challenge out, what? Five or six times? Asking anyone who develops great screen paint, anyone who has great projection screens, companies too, show us the difference of your great technology versus versus uh, other gray screens. Just show us the same. Show us a Starfield demonstration. 
Was it ever done? No. So now we come in here, we do the Starfield demonstration. Not only do we do the Starfield demonstration, I test my product against uh, DMP Supernova, Dark Tower 9, the Great Cinema 5D, other gray screens along with my gray screens. As a matter of fact, this technology also pulled an image outside at 13 feet away and it pulled the star field at six o'clock in the evening. None of those demonstrations were done. Care to watch the uh, LG demonstration on my ceiling? Come on, y'all talking. I, not to say my customer. Customers are amazing. I love my customer. But the naysayers that want to come in here and hate on my work, there you are. You can watch a video of my screen painted on my ceiling with a light fixture in the middle of it. You want to talk about ambient light projection. You're worrying about the window light coming in and washing out your screen. And I'm sitting here showing you a demonstration of my screen painted right in the center. There you go. I don't know what he's talking about. Move on. That's a dark star right there. $3,000 projection screen. DMP Supernova, $5,000 projection screen. $5,000 projection screen, $1,400 projection screen. Cinema Gray 5D, Parallax by Daylight Screens. There you go. Gray screen versus gray screen. I'll tell you one thing. Like I said before, you don't see any demonstrations matching any of my demonstrations. That's all. No demonstrations at all matching any of my demonstrations. As I said before, find anybody. Before you buy a product, find anybody who's matching my demonstrations. You're not going to find them. But I guarantee you, these are the same people who hate my product or the same people who want to buy my product. Because they know when they get home and they see their screen, they know exactly what they're getting at the end of the day. They're sitting in the dark with a washed out image, washed out contrast, colors are not pulling up right, and they're going through the painstaking nonsense of calibrating the screen. But at the end of the day, you want my product in your living room. Because that's the reason why you can't sit up there and do that. Can't do this. Especially on the you child of it and being in the dark. Football highlights. Yeah. See the beautiful thing about this? I can sit down here at four o'clock and I can watch the game. Can't do that. Watch the game. You gotta. You can't have these curtains open for one thing. You gotta put some black alcohol in there and cover these curtains up here and here. You gotta darken this environment as much as possible. You can't have any kind of window light. My screen's 126 inches high. It's 126 inches. Sorry, it's 126 inches. 16.9, right? Screen. It sits up as high as my windows. In this area, I have one, two, three. I have four windows in here. My curtains are veneer curtains, which means they're designed to let light push in. And I can sit here and I can watch the game. This screen has been on since 8 o'clock last night. I 
Let's come out of here real quick. Hold on for a minute. I'm going to sit you down over here with me. Uh, show you something. You see all the anger? See how angry they get? That's how angry they get because they can't, they're, they're mad and angry because they're not doing what I can do. That's what it comes down to. When people come in and throw insults, that doesn't make me upset. It puts a smile on my face. You know why? That means I could ruffle your feathers. That's why. When, um, what was it, the company? Uh, Black Diamond. Black Diamond contacted us back in two, uh, 2015. It contacted us. You think I got upset with them when they basically got a lawyer on us so we couldn't do any more side-by-side -side demonstrations? Ah, put a smile on my face. You know why? Because I show that a big company like that, they not only took an interest in my technology, but I was able to ruffle their feathers. You see that? Can you do that, naysayers? Can you look outside your window right now? I can look outside my window and I can see everything crystal clear. See that? Now look at my screen. See, the whole object of having an ultra short though setup is so you can treat it like a TV. You know, because where you're going to have your ultra short though at, you're going to have that in your lounge or your living room or your bedroom. Wherever it's going to be at, it's not going to be where you're going to have a home theater set up official home theater setup then you're going to have something like this setup in here where i have my 135 inch screen and then over there i got my big boy projector over here that's how you have it set up but in here this is my lounge area so my lounge area and here is for me to be able to Treat it like, that's what it is. This is my bedroom lounger slash office. I don't have a projector mounted behind me. This is designed to be like a TV kind of setting. So since it's a TV kind of setting, why in the world would I have to be sitting in the dark in order to be able to enjoy my screen? Well, let me show you something real quick here too. Ugh. Now, keep in mind, in order for a black screen to be able, this is not black, this is actually the gold. In order for a black screen to be able to um, to have a white enough level, and my screen right there is black. That's my portrait mode screen right there. Come over to, let me see. Like I said, I understand they're frustrated and angry. You might as well be frustrated and angry, but do something else about it. You're mad at me because I work hard to basically design amazing. That's what you're mad about. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. You're angry because I basically put the time and work in to develop high-tech screen paint that pretty much outperforms just about everything. So that's what you're mad about because somebody basically took 10 years of their life, worked hard, built a company from the ground up, and that's what you're mad about? Wow, that's the case, boy. That is pretty sad. That is really sad. That's what you're angry about. Because that's what it comes down to. You're mad because I get up every morning and I can show you stuff that looks amazing. That's what you're mad about. That's what you're angry about. You know, and the world is called jealousy. That's what it's called. That's what it's called. Let's go to, um, what was I looking at today? I was checking out this projector over here. I'm going to have to try to get me another one of these, too. So let me show you something. Now, for your naysayers that want to say, oh, but the screen's so dark you can't see it. Now, this is my office screen over here. Ta-da! And my office screen, in order for, is jet black. So in order for me to be able to read the text on the screen, that means the black levels on the technology would have to be high enough in order for me to read the text. Isn't it interesting that this is a black screen and yet I can read my text on here perfectly with no problem. 
which means if the screen was too dark, I wouldn't be able to read the text. And I sure enough wouldn't be able to do it next to an open window. Is that interesting or what? Well, it's funny how you would say it's horrible, but yet I don't see you doing the demonstration. Oh, I'm used to the insult. Oh, it's horrible. It's this, that, and the other. But yet, when you look at ambient light rejection technology, I'm pretty much the only one that pops up with impresses, impressive um, um, demonstrations. So let's see. See that? There's no way in the world you would have that much light. Like I said, anybody who feels, from their point of view, they're um, the naysayers, who feel from their point of view that for some reason that they could do better, you know, the exact same demonstration, you can put the post at the bottom. I'll look forward to watching it. Here it is. I'm going to show you what I go through in the day. When I want to sit back, I want to have my windows open because I don't want it to be dark in here, you know, because nobody wants to sit in a dark environment all day, you know. And I can come through here and I can look at my channels, watch my TV shows in a full lit environment. Because that's what I get from my customers. My customers come in and talk to me and say, well, look, I've got this ultra short throw projector set up. Um, I want to use it like a TV. I want to have it set up like a TV. I have this in my living room. I don't want my living room to be dark. I get that from a lot of customers. Do do not want to be in the dark. Now, if you're going to be watching a movie with your kids, yeah, you're going to turn your lights out. But majority, most of the time, if you're watching TV, sports, whatever you're watching, you don't want to be sitting in the dark. Where a lot of these places will say, well, look, it's an ambient light rejection screen, but it has to be used in an ambient light controlled environment. I don't even understand how that even works. Either it is or it isn't. Hmm. I don't get that part. So if it's supposed to be ambient light rejection, you should be able to use that in an environment with just about anything. Oh, and no, I just real quick to show you that I don't edit out my videos. The screen falling down, I'm leaving that in there. I'm leaving everything in there. Everything. My videos don't have to be, what, a gray, perfect, like things don't fall over, whatever. I don't care. At the end of the day, I told you. When my demonstrations are on delay, when big companies give me contracts, they don't care about who's watching. They don't care about your comments. They don't care about how many likes I got. They don't care about how many dis or dislikes I have. You know what they care about? is the fact that that technology is producing that image every time I walk through this entire house. That's what they care about. Because at the end of the day, for them, it's money. That's what it comes down to. They can talk to me, get a contract through me, to develop screen paint, or actually screen paint's customized for them, or I can turn around and they can use my technology to code it on old white pre-existing projection screens and probably get three or $4,000 for them a pop. That's what they see, opportunity. Football highlights. And my customers see that they don't have to be trapped in the dark. Don't forget, we got two windows open up behind us right now. Time to look out the window for a moment. Just want to stare out. Let's just look out the window for a moment. Then we can go look back at the screen and look at the ceiling. Oh, let's go look out the window again. There you go. How about this? How about if I came into the room? And I wanted to watch the screen from here. I think I would be able to watch it from here. From top to bottom. It's 
see how you can still see my screen while I'm showing you both windows at the same time and the ceiling lights and the screen doesn't become dark. See, the thing about it is, and I feel sorry for the naysayers, you only see the small picture. That's it. And it's a big picture. So I told you before that when you see me developing technology, you only know of what we show you. I never show you the stuff that you don't even know actually exists. You would have never known that a 17 even exists if I didn't show it to you or 12 didn't exist. So if you're basically shooking by the technology I'm showing you now, what about the stuff you haven't even seen yet? But then again, that's neither your problem or not because you don't support my company and you don't buy my products, so I don't care. You can, can you got two options, and these are the two options you have. Either you can go up there and work with some of that untested product, which doesn't do any of our demonstrations whatsoever, because keep in mind, if you're saying you're going to do the same thing as me, then you should be to do every demonstration that I have. And I have over 5,000 video demonstrations, so you should be to do any of those. All right. Matter of fact, I got three challenges going on right now. How about you take one of those challenges up and do one of those for me? Or make a gray screen produce a contrast level and make a black screen produce a white level high enough to blend into a gray screen. How about that? But you can't do that. So you don't have the only option you do have is if you're going to spend five or six thousand dollars for a projection screen or get a poor white white projection screen, which is images are going to look like trash. Or you're going to deal with some untested product, which pretty much at the end of the day could be house paint. And then there's me. And I don't want your business. Now, for my customers and all, I want their business. But people, the naysayers, don't come to me buying from me. I don't want your product. I don't want your, um, your business. And that's why I think they're angry. I don't want your business. You got plenty of other people you can try to shop from. You don't need to go to me. But I'm the only one on the internet showing you demonstrations on this level. And guess what, you naysayers? I got something for you too you're really going to enjoy. By the end of this year, I'm actually planning to buy three storefronts starting in Philadelphia. These are going to be display units, which means we're going to have our screens on display for the public to come in and see firsthand. Well, that's going to hurt, isn't it? Watching this technology being displayed in the reaction from other people. You know what? That's going to put me out on the map. See, I figure that what I'm doing here on YouTube is fantastic and all. I love it and all. But I need to go farther than that. And that's where the 17 and 21s are being directed. We've already applied for a corporate license already. I told you about things that are being taken care of. we got things already in the works already. And we're already in the process of... You know, doing advertising on YouTube is fun and all, but the next step is to take it where people can see it. And you know how that pretty much bounced into my head? I'll tell you why. When I did that screen called the Ultimate Challenge, you know, the screen outside, it's interesting because I had cars that were slowing down in my alleyway staring at this screen. You know why? Projection screens aren't black. They're white. And people are used to seeing a white projection screen. So when you display a black screen outside and you hit that with a projector at around six o'clock in the evening, you draw quite a bit of a crowd. Because number one, the tradition, tradition around projection screens are that you have to use them late at night. You have to because the images wash out, um, the color's bad. You can't use them around that time at all, period. So to see a screen showing that color, contrast, blowing up off the screen, people stare at that and they just look at it and go, what the freak is that? And because of COVID, I can't basically hand out business cards like I was before. I go out there with a box of business cards and get orders all day by just having that screen out there. So what better way to display my technology than to get two big giant storefronts where people can come in and see the technology on display 
inside and outside, which means I can have a setting for outside where people can come outside and check out my demonstrations. Do you have any idea where that would put me on the map? Bigger pictures, my friend, much bigger pictures. And I can do this on 720p projectors, cheap projectors. Which means all the while when we were doing demonstrations on these cheap 720p projectors, I had people way back then knocking me like, oh, why don't you get a 10K? I mean, get a uh, 4K. Why don't you get a uh, 1080p projector? You're using 720p projectors. They're garbage. You're just any other. I can show you demonstrations where you couldn't even tell 720p from a 4K. You couldn't tell a 1080p from a 1080 from a um, 4K uh, 720p projector. Done those demonstrations already. So when I got people that can come in there and go, oh, how much is this setup going to cost me? It was going to cost you this amount of money. That's cheap. Well, how much is the projector? Because projectors are expensive. I can get a projector for 150 bucks on eBay. Cheaper than that. Maybe 100 bucks there, that, and the other. When you got the other companies out there that are charging five to six thousand dollars for a projection screen, four thousand dollars for a projection screen, fourteen hundred dollars for a projection screen, and they're saying that if you want to utilize and get the best image possible, you're gonna to have to spend fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars for a projector. Shoot, that demonstration that Screen Innovation had on display was a 50,000 lumen Sony projector. How many people do you think related to that projector, that projector sitting at that coffee table, including the additional 5,000 or maybe 10 or $20,000 for the screen? But I can come in here and show you a projector being um, displayed on a projector that would cost my customers 150 bucks. You know how much the projector cost me in front of my screen downstairs? The one that's displayed in all that ambient light? $59. $59. You know why? Because most people look at a 720p projector and go, gee whiz, I don't want that trash in my house. It probably has poor res. The picture quality is going to look like garbage. It has to be 4K. It has to be 1080p. Blah, 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 blah. Lie. The whole entire time when I was doing the demonstration, that was a 600 by 800 projector, uh, 720p projector I was using downstairs. And that demonstration, that ViewSonic, that was it. 140 bucks, that's all I paid for. Because at the end of the day, it's not the projector that does the work, it's the screen that does majority of all the work. That's what it is. And the problem is that you have a lot of these big companies that will do they will do like uh demonstrations with high expensive projectors and it's a, it's a you scratch my back i scratch your back kind of thing so before you come on here and you start splurging all this hatred about this that and the other you need to understand exactly everything there is about the projection screen world and how it all works and so forth it's more than just paints it's more than just projection screen it's a business it's an industry it's a corporation that's what it is and with a lot of these big companies out here which you don't understand if you took the time to understand that it's a I'll sh you show off my projector at with your screen and we'll do it back and forth and we'll make it like a package and so and so and so. So if you're showing me a fifty thousand a fifty thousand dollar projector that's ten thousand lumens ultra short the four K laser, how is that screen gonna look the same way if I'm using a projector that's probably about um I say ten eighty P? There is no way in the world you come close looking to what that what that projector can do. So which is doing all the work? Is it the projector or the screen? Do you have to spend more for a projector to make the screen look good? Maybe that's the reason why they use such high power projectors to make up for what the screen is lacking. Have you ever seen, watch the ambient light projection demonstrations they do in their environment? It's a pre-rehearsed environment, which means all the ambient light in the environment is basically that whole entire area is using control, which means they control where the lighting goes in the environment so it doesn't disrupt the screen. And they use a high power projector to make up for what the screen is lacking. So that's why when you get it home, it doesn't look the same way. And the first thing they'll tell you is maybe you have to calibrate your projector. And people believe that nonsense. The only projector I have in the house is 1080p or these two right here. That's it. All the rest of them are 720p throughout the entire house. Let me see. Uh, like I said. Most people, when you go into a, um, a show booth, like I go in a show booth, I mean, when Circuit City was all rage before it actually died out and died, a lot of people don't understand that when you go into a, um, a Circuit City and they had those displays, you used to have a um, screen innovation display in there and you go in and sit down, they had the movie seats and 
Uh, they would have, um, um, you know, the whole setting and people would go in and they'd just be dumbfounded by the screen. Like, oh, God, beautiful screen looks. And they'd be on by the neon lights behind the back of the screen, the, the chairs, the settings, the whole movie theater effect. And they didn't realize that, okay, screen's like five grand, but how much does the projector cost sitting behind you? So what kind of projector are they using? Because I guarantee you there is a huge difference between a Chrissy projector and some of the projectors I've seen. Let's see, Crystal. Uh, let me see. Technology. All right. So for the um, the naysayers, here we go. I got something for you. Now you can find my challenge pretty much anywhere. Um, it's called the Ultimate 1100 Lumen Challenge. You can Google it. It'll pop up for you to do that same challenge. If you choose to basically go down that road, there it is right there. It'll pop up for you. Ultimate 1100 Lumen Challenge. And there it is right there. There's my challenge on display. And this is what you're gonna have to be able to do. And it's 1100 lumen projector. And here we are outside in the daytime hours. So you have to show time and you have to show that where the measuring tape is landed. Also, too, you have to do a 190 degree viewing angle off of a screen that's black. So my screen is jet black outside. It's producing an image at 12 feet away on 1100 lumens, and it's able to pull an image up outside in the morning hours. That challenge has been there since uh, uh, 2019. Yep. And not only did we challenge the hobbyists, we challenged everybody big name companies yeah we named it we put them on blast everybody because i got tired of people at this particular time i got tired of people running their mouths about oh blah blah this and blah blah you know what you want to run your mouths you want to talk trash and you know what put your money where your mouth is at okay we'll do this challenge match it there's my projector showing you exactly what it is match it don't run your mouth match it That's why we put challenges out. Because everybody wants to sit there and run their mouths about, oh, I can do this and I can do that. Okay, fine. Go uh, go do the demonstration. It's right there. That's all you got to do. Stop running your mouth. Stop talking blah, blah, blah this because I'm tired of hearing it. And just go in and do the demonstration. That's it. Simple and plain. And it's right there. Hold on for a minute. I'm going to go in here. We're going to pause that for a minute. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. How many people post it? Nobody. Not one person has matched that demonstration. Nobody. Well, you know, hey. You know, we're supposed to be this, that, and the other, but... I don't see anybody match any of the demonstrations at all. What's the problem then? You know what? Even harder than that, we did a 50 lumen projector outside to make it even harder. Because we knew that one wasn't gonna get matched. We figured out, eh, might as well have some fun. I see 50 lumen is 50. And then we got the sun killer. Sun killer was never meant to be a challenge. It was a display. It's not even a paint. People are like, oh, sun killer, it's not a paint. It's a game. It's an actual physical, chemical game. And that's what it is. So let me explain to you what's going to happen in 2021 at the end of what we got planned. So now we have a screen with color coding technology, the blue screen, which people, even, even the naysayers got that one mixed up. Because they're thinking, oh, it's a blue screen. It has nothing to do with the screen being blue. You missed the whole entire concept of the entire idea. It has nothing to do with the surface being blue. If you reflect off a blue surface, it's going to come up blue. You reflect off a red surface, it's going to come up red. That's how it works. So the screen was coded blue 
to give people an understanding of what color coding technology is. So you have a surface that's blue, but it's projecting color. Blue, green, red, orange, black, white, all that good stuff, all right? So it's to give you a, a deeper understanding on how it works. So if you're watching a screen that's blue producing color, that means there has to be something within the screen that allows the projector to be able to recognize color when it makes contact with the screen. That's why has nothing to do with the fact physical screen being blue. It's actually within, within, with what's within the coding of blue that makes it what it is. The same thing why you're looking at a gray screen produce a contrast level and a star field just as dark as a screen that's actually black side by side. Hmm. As you watch a screen that's black, have the ability to blend into a screen that's lighter than it. As you're watching, if you saw the demonstration on that 17 that we developed, the Luminous, that technology produced an insane white level for a screen that's three times darker than a 12. But that's the reason why blue is blue. It's not because of the color blue. It's because of what's in the color blue that makes blue blue. Right, people saying, oh, it's a blue screen, so on and so on. So, so that's what we sit there and we laugh when we see people trying to make blue screen paint. I'm like, oh, this is hilarious. Freaking hilarious. As I'm saying, you couldn't come close to matching any one of my demonstrations. Look at this. This is a demonstration I did outside in the snow. You know why I did a contrast demonstration in the snow? Do you have any idea how much white light reflects off in the snow? It is absolutely insane. This is why when you walk outside and if you don't have sunglasses on, you get snow blind. Because there's literally that much white light pushing off, reflecting off the snow outside. So I thought it would be fun to do a demonstration on our black technology outside in the snow, showing contrast levels. Y'all want to talk about doing the same demonstrations. You're not even half of the elements that I deal with half the time. But let's go find our sun killer. Look at this. You see, there you go. You have to match every last one of these demonstrations. Good luck. There you go. If you want to run your mouth about doing demonstrations inside, we can take it outside. Let's see what time it is in the day. You want to talk about wallpaper projection screens? We had them already. We had them back in 2017. We had that technology already done. First ones that had it before LG had it. Now this is just for the naysayers. The naysayers who run their mouth so much that don't know how deep the rabbit hole goes. You see that technology right there? That was wallpaper technology we developed. It's not a paint. It's an actual physical screen that we made. that were as bright as TVs. Where is that technology, you say? Hmm, I really can't tell you about that one. Oh, there you go. There's your nightmare right there. This is a 17. This is the darker version of the 17. That is a darker version of a 17. See how black that screen is? It matches my sofa. See the white level on that screen? And you're worrying about 12s. Tee -hee. There you go. And I'm, I look forward, I look forward, I'm gonna tell you right now, I look forward to trying to mimic a 17, I really do. 
it is going to be the funniest thing ever. We are actually looking forward to that. The scene that people are going to try to make that 17. Good luck. That screen is darker than black paint. It was engineered, so it's very, very dark. And it can produce an insane white level. Here you go. Do, 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 do. So let's go in here. Now, you know why everything's been quiet? I'm going to tell you why. It's called lawyers. That's what it's called at the end of the day. It's called lawyers, and it's called a copyright infringement. That's what it's called. That's what it's called. Tamper with the technology. I told you, I'm waiting for somebody. To, <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to mess with the 17. That sucker got so much paperwork on it. It's not even funny. Oh, please do. Because you'll go through what the other person just almost went through. And it came very close to that. Very, very close to it. To a very serious lawsuit. And it wouldn't have been pretty. It would not have been pretty. There'd have been no way to get around it at all, period. And I think in this era right now, you want to start 2021, at least with at least having a shirt on your back. Not getting sued for doing something real stupid. So there we are right there, black technology outside. As I told you before that naysayers, if you're going to try to come close to doing any of my demonstrations, keep in mind that when we test our technology for the gain, those tests are done outside. So all that having your windows blocked and poorly lit environments and all that nonsense, we don't do that. This is how these demonstrations, this is how we do our demonstrations for testing our game. That projector is 2,000 lumens, and we're somewhere around about to be able to do. These are the tests our screens have to go under. Now I consider the fact they have to be tested under multiple, multiple high-performance sample sheets, certified screens. See? Tons of demonstrations outside. In the rain, displaying the screens in the rain, in the snow, in the heat. And you want to talk about the simple demonstrations. Keep in mind, the demonstrations that I show you inside the house are simple demonstrations to us. It, they're not hard demonstrations. Hard demonstrations are basically doing them outside. That's a hard demonstration to do because you know, you're not dealing with anything that has any protection at all, period. You know, when you're doing people doing ambient light rejection demonstrations, you know, they got the walls and ceilings and stuff protecting them. Oh, the big 235.1, that's a big screen. I built tells a nice one too. Paint on demonstrations, a ton of those right there. 200 lumen projector, uh, what did we do this one with? This is testing something. Yeah, this is when we're testing one of the screens out. This is 200 lumens, so we're 200 lumens at nine feet back. 200 lumens at nine feet back. So this is a demonstration being done on silver technology we're working on. This is 200 lumens only at nine feet back. Silver. I should develop some silver technology. I haven't really worked with that in a while. I haven't done a silver screen in a while. See, now, see, ever since we started developing the gray screen, we figured might as well just start developing other stuff too now. You know what I mean? See right here? This is another problem I have right here. When people are supposed to be showing off their screens, uh, naysayers, you can take some pointers here. 
when you show up a screen, you're supposed to show up and you do an ambient light or, um, um, environment um, demonstration. You're supposed to show your screen off with the projector off. So the customers can see how much physical light is making contact with the screen while the projector is on. So I turned my lights out when I had condensed lighting. Boy, I was so happy when I moved into the house well, to a certain degree. But when I saw the condensed lighting, I was like, oh, my goodness, because that's another level of testing. That makes it harder for me to make to, to develop better screen paint. So every environment I move into, this place had a ton of windows in. I'm thinking, oh, this is fantastic. I find this as a blessing because this means I have to work even harder to develop a better technology to deal with the environment. One of the things I liked about this house is it had condensed lighting everywhere in the house. And right here where I had the screen at, I was able to come in, show the demonstration, have the light hitting the screen because in some of the demonstrations I watch when people use condensed lighting, they would have the lighting, or anybody that ever had condensed lighting, you know you can put your hand up on there and you can shift the lighting from side to side. So what they would do is they would shift the light outward to give it the illusion that was making contact with the screen, but it wasn't. As you can see at the bottom, exactly the circles where the light was making contact that it wasn't physically hitting the screen. And then they would show up the screen to be some kind of image across the screen. You didn't know what was hitting the screen or what wasn't hitting the screen. So when I did demonstrations, I would turn off, I blocked the projector, allowing you to see the physical light that's making contact with the screen at all times. And then I would turn the projector on. Because it's very important for my customers to be able to see this. So just showing you how much lighting we have in our environment. All right. There you go, boom, screen pop right on. So the entire time when I'm doing a demonstration, you will see, you will know that there is light physically in contact with the screen at all times. And you can see it right there and there. Now, this place over here, I was extremely happy because when I was looking at the bay of windows, I was like, well, I can put a screen in there. I'll have window light all wrapped around it. This is going to be amazing. So that's what I liked about that. But again, like I said, when you watch demonstrations, how many demonstrations do you see with this much light making contact with the screen while they're showing off a black screen? None. Here we go. Perfect example. Perfect freaking example of a demonstration of someone saying that it's ambulant rejection screen pain. Look how dark the walls are. Now I tell people when you watch demonstrations, look at the back of the wall from top to bottom. That tells the whole story on how much physical light is making contact with the screen. And a lot of you naysayers, when I watch your demonstrations, and I do, I see the exact same thing. See this right here? This is the part that has me laughing the hardest. All right. You see that right there? See the lighting right here? So what they'll do is they'll put a picture here, and they'll have their condensed lighting hitting on the picture here to make it look like the room is well lit. Like we got lighting here and lighting here. This is what you call ambient light control. They'll pepper out light to the environment to give that illusion. Secondly, this wall right here, as bright as it should look like this over here. See so how the corners are nice and dark. You can't even see all that's dark right here and here. That shouldn't look like that. And they'll have a lighting here to say, okay, look, we have lighting here. It's a well, it's a well lit environment. There you go. That shouldn't be there. What he should have had, he should have had a painting here. He should have had a painting there. And he should have had light here and light here. And he should have had light here in the center. And they all should have been coming down and hitting the screen. Again, and then look how close the projector is sitting from the screen. My projector, my demonstration was 14 feet back. So the distance throw isn't that far. And this is what they consider to be an ambient light impressive demonstration. This is acceptable. See how close the projector is to the screen? This is considered to be an acceptable demonstration. This is bull crap. It's garbage. It's trash. I'm sorry. I don't care if people don't like it. It's not supposed to be that way.
This is an easy demonstration. Are you kidding me? I can do this with my eyes? Oh, freaking unbelievable, man. You gotta be freaking kidding me. And people wonder why I get so I'm passionate about my work. If you're gonna do your work, you do it right. You do it right or you don't do it at all. Now he's gonna show the the uh the pattern. You should be showing the pattern. Let's see how long this stays on. Environment is still dark. Like, no, but it's well lit. It's still dark. Look at the lighting here and look at the lighting there. Now the lights go back out again. All right, hold on. So I don't like about this, man. I'll tell you. See, that's the problem I've had. Your environment is supposed to look like that. That's how it's supposed to look. That's how bright it's supposed to be. You should be able to see all the cracks, all the corners, everything in that environment, the floor, everything. You should be able to see everything in that environment with no problem whatsoever. Naysayers, you may want to take notes on this because this is what you need to, this is how your environment needs to look like when you're doing a demonstration. If you're talking about ambient light rejection technology, which we do, you need to have the same looking environment. There should be no excuse for the environment to be that dark. See how well the environment looks? That's how bright it should be. It should never be that dark. If I can't make out the back of your walls, we got some problems. But yet, y'all, they're struggling with demonstrations like that. And we're doing demonstrations like this. Yeah, good luck. This is what I find hilarious. And it's not, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. If you're going to come at me by saying, no, I, like I said, from the demonstrations I've seen, oh my goodness, I swear. <sighs> it's, it is, it's frustrating when you're in this field line of work and people look at that and say, oh, but that's that's ambient light rejection. No, the freak it ain't. This is ambient light rejection technology. In here. That's my environment right here while I'm sitting there. That's how my screen lights up in here. But let's get to that sun killer. Because I'm curious how many people are going to be able to. They can't even complete the uh, the other challenge. The other challenge is pretty easy. Oh, no, no. Because here's the thing with the naysayers. If you want to, like I said, knock yourself, make your own product. But if you want me to test your product, it's going against the sun killer, which means I'm taking it outside and it's going to go against direct sunlight. That's what you're going to go against. Because that's the next project we're going to be working on. And that's where I'm taking you. Any screen, any company, I don't care who you are, or what you make and what you have. If you feel that you can go against a 21, man, let's do it. We'll go outside and we'll do the test on that on that technology at 2% and we'll do it in direct sunlight. And let's see how long you last. Because if you can't deal with the radar lighting in, inside, if you're having a problem and you're struggling with that, what makes you think that you're going to be able to take on our technology when we can go outside? There you go. People have white screens that want to be outside. There's your screens right there. That's what we do to white screens outside. It's 
So automatically from the door next year, when we start developing our own form of inflatable screens and outdoor projection screens, well, yeah, anyone who has white projection screens, that's it. That's it. You're done. That's it. I hate to say it that way, but that's what's going to happen. Now, we are going to make a coating that will allow companies that um, are have all white screens and that they can't afford, if they not say can't afford, but if they can't buy ours and change out their inventory, then we can get a coating for them that basically they can buy from us to recoat their screens to upgrade to the next level of technology. Because white screens are outside, need to be obsolete. Oh, the doorway projection screen. I can do some of that service downstairs too. Is that a ship update? Yeah, that was a ship update. That was a ship update. There we go. Like I said, all my demonstrations are like this, fully lit environments with the window light hitting that screen. I'm sitting there watching the game, eating, drinking, sitting there watching the game in the video. Watching the game. Look at all that light pouring in on my, on my screen. Now I said feel free, match any one of my demonstrations, inside or out. But I'm gonna give you that sun killer. And you need to you need to have that demonstration. Look at this. One guy was talking about, oh yeah, but nobody buys. No, because my dark my customers don't want to sit in the dark. That's all to it. They don't want to be sitting in the dark at the end of the day. They don't want to buy a product that's untested. They don't want to deal with that nonsense. That's me every Friday. They don't want to deal with that nonsense at the end of the day. Now, you, you naysayers may hate me on that. That'll make a difference. Like I said, I don't care. But for my customers, they don't have to sit in the dark. A nice high performance screen that can cost them thousands of dollars. They don't have to spend the money for over expensive, overpriced projectors. They don't have to worry about whether my projector has enough contrast and none of that nonsense. They don't got to go through any of that. Was this the paint on demonstration? Yeah, painted a demonstration on the wall. Painted a demonstration on a dirty, dirty piece of, uh, of uh, material I found downstairs. Paint and dry demonstrations right on camera. Surface and not sanded, nothing. Just a dirty piece of trashy material that I found downstairs in the basement. Decided to turn that into a projection screen. Look how trashy that surface looks. Most people wouldn't even dare paint a screen on that. I never thought that's really relaxing to watch. There you go. Guess what's on that screen right there? That is a United States Postal Service box. I forgot what that was. I don't know that was plexiglass or piece of wood or whatever. That right there is a styrofoam projection screen all in one hit. That's the easy stuff, Ken. Show them the hard stuff. All right, let's see. Let's go find that direct hit. Let's get in that demonstration. I'm going to have to do that one right there. I'm going to have to do that one again, too, that direct hit. Come on, there. You're off one. Here we go. Yeah. That's going to be a hard one for you right there. I'm, I'm not going to play with you on that one. That it's going to be rough on you. You never, you know how hard it is when people have sunlight that come to their windows 
and how it disrupts the screen. And you're talking about technology that took a direct hit from the sun. Do you have any idea how difficult that is to do? But like I said, you're going to have to crack some books open, come back with me in three years and understand how physics and light and all that stuff work. You know, So what was the idea for that technology? What was it, what's it for? Well, the 21. So 21s have coding. They have 100% coding in them. And not only do they have 101 coding in them, but the 21s also have the sun killer game embedded into them. Now you imagine a screen that can take a direct hit from sunlight and also has the ability to be able to read the projector's color. That's a pretty powerful screen. I mean, that's a screen that if it could take a direct hit outside of sunlight, inside the house, it's nothing. You could have your windows open, lights on, whatever. It wouldn't make a difference at all, period. It wouldn't make one difference at all. Oh, that's the driveway projection screen. What was that? Was it, was it a 12? Yeah, it was a 12. I mean, we've got to now redesign it for something else, too. It was a 12. Change over now to a 21. Let's see if we can dig me up. Oh, that was another one outside. Test demonstration to see exactly how much ambient light a screen could take in. Wait, hold on. I was about to say, I was like, oh, ha ha ha. Yeah, that'll never work. This is invisible technology. We could give you this challenge and you couldn't have passed this one either. That's 1500 lumens outside. So that's a 1500 lumen demonstration outside through technology that could basically feed light through it. That's something else we haven't even added in that one either. So let me know the Supreme. Um, Supreme, Supreme, the Supreme. Where did the crew boys go? Oh, I can't call crew boys. I forgot they don't, they don't exist anymore. That, that's gone now. That's all gone. Can't put that in there anymore. That was the first test. Direct hit from the sunlight. Right through the white right glass. It was a smoke. Yeah, it was a smoke. I was thinking, oh, which one we had it named under was a smoke. Was a smoke. The smoke 10. We changed to a smoke 12. I took the direct hit. I think it was an AR 12 that took that hit too.
Yeah, they can be submerged under water and project images right through water at 50 lumens. That was one of the things smokes could do. But smoke got scrapped for a 12. We decided to design something even more advanced than that. So yeah, we have technology that literally you can submerge it underwater and you can push 50 lumens right through it. It won't need to distort the picture quality. There we go, people. Welcome to your challenge nightmare. This is the uh, technology which now we're gonna have to change it to a 21. Took a direct hit from sunlight. So your naysayers, that one, uh, we have some fun here. But your naysayers wanna talk all this trash about making my own, make, trying to make my own product, you can do it for less. There you go. Match that demonstration. I'll give you two days. I'll be back here in two days to look at the bottom to see how many people actually post it and was able to do that demonstration. So that's a screen at 1%. And it's not a screen paint. It's a physical gain that, that we're working on that can take a direct hit from, from the sun. And keep in mind that the material, and this is how hard the demonstration was, was for the screen that had to be done. So let me explain to you how the demonstration had to be done. The projector is on the inside. So the projector is on the inside at eight feet away. At eight feet away, it's traveling through a fully lit environment. It makes contact to a plate of glass. It has to push through the glass and then make contact with the screen that's on the inside, pushing an image through the screen at the same time where sunlight is pushing through the other end at the same time making sure that the screen absorbs in as much light as we possibly can. So you would think about that one before next time you want to basically run your mouth about how you could do the same thing that I'm doing. And feel free to try to mimic the same demonstration. I look forward to seeing it. So let me show you right here so we can go to the back. So there's a projector right there. The projector has to push an image Hit the screen. This is literally how much physical light that's hitting the screen that the image on the opposite side where the projector sits is completely washed out and it's gone. This is how much light that's making contact. So instead of having the projector on the opposite side to test the gain, we have it on the back end, which means makes it even harder because what happens is that image, it's going to have to filter through that screen at the same time when all of that light is pushing right through it at the same time and still maintain an image outside with color and clarity. I'll make sure I put this link at the bottom so you can check it out for yourself. And this is the technology that's being embedded into a 21. So right now we have screens that are the 17s that at an hour it took to develop the technology took did 11 screen certified, which means it actually went against 11 certified projection screens with no problem at two, one and 2%. And here you are, you have a blue screen that is 100% coded that can see color. And now you have the sun killer, which we dubbed which is one of the most powerful gains now on the planet. And how is that? Because there is no screen on the face of the planet that can take a direct hit from the sun and produce an image that's crystal clear. You can see how much physical light is pushing through my screen. So all my projectors got to do is basically travel the distance and push an image through all that sunlight, making contact through that screen and produce an image on the other side. And keep in mind, the screen is not on the inside of the house because that would make it too easy. Because it's being protected by the windows and doors. We had to put it on the outside. And lo and behold, we have the technology, which we dubbed the sun killer. And this is what you're gonna have to be able to do. I look forward to your demonstrations in two days. See right there? It's not even in the window. It's actually pushed away from the window. This is where the company in Germany wanted to buy rights to this technology. 
Do you have any idea, any company that will have the technology to be able to hit, have a screen take a direct hit by sunlight? Do you have any idea exactly how powerful that technology would be? I mean, think of it. Inside the house, be easy. You can have your windows open. You can have this on your patio porch. You can have this in your sunroom. It wouldn't make a difference because the screen is not affected by it. Watch the yellow fish push back and forth. Yellow fish. Even the camera can't even focus out there with that much lighting. And like, oh, but is that a screen? No, that's a game. That's an actual game we're developing. That's a game. Now, there's two ways we can go about this. Say we never developed the 21s, and say we developed to try to turn this into like a booster for your screen, which we could do. We can make it into a booster where you can basically spray this on your screen and it would upgrade the gain on your screen. We could do that way, but no. I'm going to turn it to my own physical screen because that's what I want. I want my own physical projection screen. So that way, when I decide to go to one of those little show conventions with all those big boy screens in there, I can have that technology sitting there and we'll have it on a 720p projector. We'll have it on something really old that'll be way under what they're using. And we could do that demonstration in the parking lot. Can you imagine that? All of them out there showing off their screens. I've seen their booths, like this ambient light controlled environments. They have these high powered projectors all set up and they're showing off their screens. And I'm outside doing a demonstration and with all that light hitting the screen on a 720p projector. Which that was a 720p. I forgot this is a 720p projector too, also. Because the first thing they're going to ask me is what kind of projector you're using? So and so and so. Oh, 720p projector, 600 by 800 res. That's what I'm using. Cost me 140 bucks. How much you pay for your projector? Like eight grand. All right, so I'm going to keep this here. So I'm going to post that at the bottom of the link. Uh, uh, for the naysayers, it said they can do the exact same thing. I look forward to your demonstrations in about two days from now. So we can get a look at that. There you go. That's my screen right there when the sun's coming through my kitchen. That's my tabletop screen. I'm working on right now. See how well lit my house is? Nowhere that house is dark. Nowhere. Look how well it is. You can see everything. I walk it out and you can see everything in my house with no problem. See my screen firing off. Lights on. Windows pushing through. Seven twenty p projector. I paid fifty nine dollars for that projector. That's it. Got it off eBay for fifty nine dollars. Most people, like I said, wouldn't go near it because it's seven twenty p. That's what my screen does with seven twenty p projector. My screen at seven twenty p looks better than some of y'all with four k projectors, and y'all sit in the dark. I don't sit in the dark with my screens at all. Go upstairs. Right there. That's the room I just showed y'all. Looking out the windows. Funny how you see that there. 
See, that's what I said. Them reinhearsed environments. Stuck in them reinhearsed environments because y'all can't have the house too well lit. The screens will wash out. I'll put my fish back on. Fact, let's do some relaxing outer space YouTube. Relaxing outer space YouTube. Hmm, what do I want to watch? I like this one right here. Let's do. I'll watch some outer space. Some dark contrast. Let me back on. Let's see. Yeah, I watched some dark space and uh, dark contrast. And we can just do what I did in the video we just saw behind me. And I just shot the video you just saw on the, on what's more on YouTube, me looking out the window. So we'll just repeat that little deja vu. I'm gonna stare at my window right here. I come back, look at the screen. Come back, look out the window. Come back, look at the screen. How about this? Starfield demonstration. Let's do a Starfield demonstration. There we go. OLED beta fish, LG. See, this is why I try to get to understand what the naysayers. At the end of the day, my customers don't want to spend four to five thousand dollars. They don't even want to pay fourteen dollars. They only want to pay eight hundred dollars for a screen. Period. Not even eight hundred dollars. They don't want to spend a lot of money for a projector. They want a nice setup. They want to be using the fully lit environment. They don't want to be trapped in the dark. They don't want to go calibrating their projectors and none of that dumb nonsense. They don't want to go through any of that at all. Period. At the end of the day, they just want something that's going to set up, it's going to look high performance, and it's going to give them better color, better contrast. The image is not going to wash out because you have the lights on, or they have to worry about because they have any window light kicking off in the environment, that is going to disrupt their picture quality. And even with these gray screen paints out there, which I have seen, and those of you naysayers who got offended by that, then all you got to do is do exactly what for. Show me a demonstration with your gray screen next to multiple high performance certified screens then I want to see that demonstration showing our blue greens reds to show which one actually produces the better and brighter colors then I want to see a star field demonstration or any form of contrast demonstrations showing which one produces the better contrast and then when you're done with all that take it outside take a thousand lumen projector sit back 13 feet and pull a star field demonstration plus a Tron and I want to see that at a 190 degree viewing angle because I did it already and until you show me that you're just doing this to me that's all you're doing because I got videos backing up everything. Right now, as I'm talking to you about doing that demonstration, I'm showing you a demonstration of an OLED fish with two windows open up behind me in a fully lit environment. Like I said, stuff that I do every day is a challenge for y'all. But as for my customers, like I said, at the end of the day, they get a nice, beautiful screen in a fully lit environment, and it doesn't cost them an arm and leg. Oh, I got a customer pretty soon who's going to be showing off his 12 uh, he's setting it up right now, and he can't wait to show you. He's actually doing his customized theater room setup. I can't wait to see this, too. Uh, we do video chat from time to time, and I see him the downstairs, how he's hooking it up. Ooh, man. So I helped them with a few things. I helped them get the movie curtains and LED lights and all that stuff because my customers know when they contact me and say, hey, Ken, I may need help with a projector. I will show you where to get a projector. I'll show you where to get movie curtains. He got the crushed velvet. It's real nice. Didn't cost them an arm and a leg because I know exactly where to buy these at. Um, LED lights, whatever they need. And if they need to find a good projector from a good merchant, don't have to worry about getting burnt. 
I bought, I buy a lot of projectors off eBay, and I know exactly where to point them at, where to get these projectors from for cheap, so you don't have to pay an arm and a leg. But you really don't need to spend all this money for an expensive projector. 720p projector right there at 150 bucks. That's it. Just so you can see that the projector doesn't do all the work at 150 bucks. Hey, you still need our technology. That 720p projector look amazing. There we go. And like I said, unlike the screen paints that I have seen online, uh, what I like to know is where are your certified tests on your screen paints? That's what I want to know. Because another thing, too. If you're going to call yourself making the same product as mine, then you need to get a kitchen drawer full of certified projection screens because people are going to want to see the difference between your screen and a $3,000 Dark Star 9 or a $5,000 Daylight screen or even the Gray Cinema 5D or Cinema Gray or Cinema Gray 3D or the DMP Supernova Blade, DMP Supernova uh, Infinity. You got your matinee silver, matinee black. You got your matinee black 0 0.9. You got your Seymour AV 1.3. Any of them? Can you show a difference? Because I can. Or you got to do more than that. So you think because you just mix some paints together that, oh, no, 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 we're not done there. Then you got to do the distance stroke test. So now you got to get a projector. You got to drop it back 25 feet. Uh, keep in mind, my 17. Uh, the black slate could pull up an image at 25 feet back, 25 feet back on a thousand lumens. Yeah, you'll have to do those demonstrations. Then you got to do them at 800. Then you got to do them at 900. Then you got to do the demonstrations outside, which means you're going to do all different forms of caliper projection screens, all different calibers of projectors. Or you're going to have to do that demonstration where you're basically going to have to drop the settings in your projector. I did one on a Casio laser projector where my uh, brightness was at minus 16. So all that stuff has to be done. Then you gotta go out and you gotta buy a bunch of ultra short throw projectors and short throw projectors because people wanna wanna see how is that screen gonna react on ultra short throw. Do you not have an ultra short throw demonstration outside on a 140 inch screen outside on ultra short throw? You have to do that one too. And then there's the how much destruction or how much punishment the screens can go through. So that means you're going to be freezing screens. You're going to be heating them up, all kinds of crazy stuff. Heck, I even have a demonstration where I took a Brillo pad to a screen and tried to basically peel the paint off of it. That's why my screens can go on motorized projection screens. You'll have to match those demonstrations too. Also, to freeze in the screen, I have a demonstration where I actually took a fabric screen, soaked it in water, duct tape it, froze it in my freezer, and pulled it apart on camera. You have to do that one too. I mean, if you're going to follow everything I'm going to do, you might as well just follow the demonstrations. So, right here we have the Dark Star 9, and we have a Cinema Grade 5D and a white sheet of paper. And again, my screen is sitting here with the windows open. And this screen's not black, it's actually the uh, gold.
So I'm showing you a contrast demonstration in a fully lit environment. Can you show me that? Let's go with some birds then. Well, maybe it's because my screen is so dark. That's the reason why I pick contrast levels. So let's put in some nice bright levels instead. Let's bring in some nice, beautiful birds. There you go. So not only can my technology, number one, bring up an incredible to switch it over to bright beautiful colors not only does it be able to produce a brighter more vivid image than the dark so nine but the colors actually come up color red Getting that from oh I forgot you got to do color pattern test too. So along with doing the test with showing off, you have to do, keep in mind, and I'm trying to talk to the naysayer here, do not do those demonstrations over and over again with all the different colors. You're going to have to do like color tests. So people want to see contrast levels. They're going to see reds and blues and greens and all that stuff. You got to show all that too at the same time. So you got to show what's the difference between your screen when it shows red compared to the screen that is uh, displaying against your screen. We see something interesting? Watch this. My walls are red and my screen is not. And my screen is actually pulling up a more deeper and richer red than the walls that I had that are painted red in my room. are red so how's the world that my walls are red the projector is projecting red on a red wall but the red that's coming up on my screen is a darker and richer red and it's my screen's actually gold it's not even black it's kind of a goldish kind of color color blue Hmm, that's interesting. And mind you, that's a gold. That's not a black screen. That's not a gray screen. This is the gold screens. They used to be nines. And then we changed them over to the twelves. So that's what they are now. So this is not even black or any of those other colors. It's just simply a gold screen. this back over to some hmm, sharks. I don't want to watch the shark. I'll change over that. I'll watch that right now. I'll change it over to some deep blues. There we go. I have this going off on my fully lit environment. Let's go downstairs now. Game is still on. So sitting in a fully lit environment. Screen is still up on the ceiling displaying, no problem. Here's my star field demonstration. There's my gray screen over there. Let's 
projection screen right there. So that's white piece of paper on a white screen. Keep in mind that is an elite surface right there. That thing has a 2.0. I bought it as a white screen. That's how I bought it as a white screen. So that's white, white. That's how I bought it. There's the Elite uh, Cinema Gray 5D and the uh, Elite, um, um, let's see, Dark Star 9. So we'll bring up the color red. The color red. Underwater 4K fish. Freak am I doing? I'm sitting there thinking, like, where the freak is the freaking? Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly. It's, it's running to the PS4. I'm thinking, like, okay, where's the freaking um, um, uh, fire stick? And I'm running around the house looking for it, thinking, oh, I misplaced the fire stick. Not realizing that the um, I'm running off the PS4. So let's go over here real quick. Uh, let's grab, um, let me see. Grab the color red. Red. All right, there we go. I'm going to display solid red. That's what this one is. And this is what I was talking about when it came to gray screens. This is one of the things I was asking for, and nobody would do it. Everybody kept beating around the bush, didn't want to do the demonstration, could do the same dumb demonstration day in and day out, but they're just displaying all these pretty colors across the screen. And that's not what I asked for. Now, this is before we started developing any form of gray screens. We we're just strictly black screens. I think the darkest screen we have was the Platinum Eclipse. So I said, look, if I got to come out here and I have to show my black screens and I have to show white levels on my black screens, how come people who have gray screens can't show contrast levels on their screens? That's why we kept re requesting a Starfield demonstration, because that was one of the hardest demonstrations to pull up. Nobody would do it. For the environment, nobody would do it. What's, what's the difference between your screen and other gray screens? Nobody would do it. So you know what? I said, fine, we'll make the black silver. Well, actually, we didn't have plans for the black silver, but we made a gray screen, we called it the black silver, and that's what we brought out. 
Like I said, someone can show me a gray screen, and if that gray screen produces a contrast level better than all the other gray screens, that's a pretty impressive screen. No one did. So, like I said, that became... I don't understand that part. Now, I've got demonstrations on my account showing my screen, black screens going against black paint, black fabric, black spray paint, uh, black material, black vinyl. Yeah, I have all those demonstrations on my, on my site. You can go check it out if you want. So I've done my demonstrations against other black materials easily. But when it comes to gray screens, nobody does that. No, they do side-by-side -side little comparisons, but they do all beautiful colors. No, don't do the beautiful colors. Do the part where the screen is going to struggle the most. Show me contrast levels. Because we know that these screens are going to have a problem with contrast. Where if I have to show you a black screen, i got to show you white levels. Which one of these black materials is going to pull up a higher white level? So everybody kept skipping around then. Okay, fine. No, you know, whatever. I made a black silver. Black silvers can produce contrast. So that's what makes my screen better than any other gray screen out there. Because I can do something that I asked repeatedly people to do and it wouldn't do it. So there's the color red. Right there. Right? All right, let's go swap over to blue, see what we get. There's blue. All right, now, ask for different colors. Can you give me, if I go back and I say, okay, look, let's go with, um, come out of clear. Let's pull up green, 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 green. See which one pulls out a better green color. Let's see what happens if we pull up green. There's green. Green has a better chance of popping up, because like I said, but still, not good. Let's go back, and someone's going to say, well, okay, let's go pull up, um, uh, let's see. Sony. Sony's contrast demonstration, which I like, because that's a very hard one to do. Let's pull that one up. Sony's contrast demonstration. Let's pull that one up. Let's see what we get off that one. Yeah, you see that right there? Now, this right here is, oh, I lost my screen. There's my screen right there. See how great my screen is? So what's the difference between my screen and those when it comes to contrast levels? This is what I was asking. All the hobbyists and people who make gray screen paints do this demonstration, they wouldn't do it. All right, fine. I'll do it for you. And then when I do it for them, they get mad at me about it. Slackers. Yeah, my dad would have called you the same thing. He'd have called you a bunch of slackers. That's what he would have called you. That's what I was asking for. What is the difference? Can your screen pull a contrast level? My screen can do it easily. I can pull a contrast level off a gray screen. Oh, how come you can't do it? Because basically, I can tell exactly what's in your product just by staring at it. I know what's in it. See, that's not a black and gray paint mixture. As a matter of fact, um, the technology behind black silvers, there's no paint in it. Ooh, okay, that's a bit shocking. Yeah, there's a whole lot of things about the technology because I show you, you don't understand how it reacts. Like, I can't wait for someone to do a demonstration on a 17 because 17s have an interesting requirement for them. And anyone who tries to mimic the demonstration will not know what it is. Well, we're not going to take that. Come on, that's having missing half the fun. But look at that right there. You saw how great my screen was. So in order for a black silver to do this, a black silver would have to have something special in it in order to project it to be to see beyond the surface, which is gray, which is display gray, which displays a washed out, faded image. Oh, by the way, the projector behind me has a 20,000 to one contrast. Let's go and take the screen here. And we'll put it right there. And then we'll take this screen and we'll put it right there. And then we'll take this screen and we'll put it right there. And let's go back and get. Oops, that one fell off. Which one we need? More tape for this? It's still sticky. What's the deal? Get in there. 
Let's give me a couple more gray screens we can put up there. Let's go with... Cinema 3D. Put that right there. These are all gray screens. A matinee. This is a matinee. Anytime you see this, naysayers, so you can understand what you're looking for when you're buying screens, that stands for Matinee Black 0.9. The reason why I'm coming on the naysayers so hard because they come into my channel running their mouth so much and they don't even understand, even they don't, they don't even know what to look for when it comes to certified screens, but yet you can make the same product I can, but yet you don't even understand the first thing about a certified screen. How do you know if a screen's certified? Do you know what to look for on the sample sheet? That's what you look for right there. There you go. There you go. All right, so we got all gray screens next to my screen, which is also gray. And let's see what happens when we pull up some contracts. Let's see which one of these gray screens are going to pull up the highest contrast level. Oh, we forgot one. We got a Dark Star 9 over here, too. We got to put that there, too. Can you forget about the Dark Star 9? Dark Star 9. So not, not Dark Star 9. We have a DMP Supernova. If you want that sample sheet here right there, I'll hold it for a minute. There's a number where you can get it from. You can start your demonstrations at. There you go. All right. Oh, web address. Oh, that number is gone. I'm sorry. There's a web address. My bad. There's a web address. You can read that or you can just Google Dark Star 9 to get your sample sheets from. If you're going to be doing the same thing I'm going to be doing, you're going to have to get all those sample sheets and do all these tests. It's not going to be as easy. People don't want to see you slap some great paint against a screen and say, voila, it looks amazing. No. You have to do the demonstrations correctly. So we are one, two, three, four, five, six certified screens. And my screen is still producing a black level. As a matter of fact, you can do the Starfield demonstration. You could do the um, Sun Killer demonstration. You could do the 1100 Lumen Challenge, the 50 Lumen Challenge, and I'll make this a challenge also. To be able to pull a black Starfield demonstration versus six certified black screens or dark gray screens. And my screen's gray. All right, and let's put in that, uh, let's put some color in, see what happens. There you go. My screen also too pulls higher color. Let's 
can't do it. Alright, let's take these off, these off, these off, these off. These off. So we have a Dark Star 9 and we have a Cinema Grey. So now there's my grey screen against two certified grey screens, Dark Star 9 by Elite Screens and uh, the Cinema Grey 3D. And on top of that, next to a white screen, which is also an Elite screen. And my screen is actually a light grey screen, which can produce contrast and brighter colors and so forth. And as I said before, when I ask those demonstrations against those people who say they can make a better gray screen paint, there you go. Match the demonstration. And the black, like I said, the black silver is considered to be our bottom dollar screen. It's we call our um, more of a um, our cheaper screen because we specialize in black screens, darker screens. So any screen that's pretty much lighter than what we're used to making, we consider that to be a, um, a mid entry level screen. Which keep in mind, our mid entry level screens are so good that they can produce contrast, bright, beautiful colors, and they can go toe to toe with screens that are three to $5,000 easily. So before you make a comment about how you can make the same thing for $50, then I suggest you back up your, your talk and do any of the demonstrations that I'm doing right here. Let's take this off all together. And let's just display my screen by itself. Side by side to a white screen. Easy. It's interesting it? watching a gray screen produce contrast levels.
What's this right here? Sony, okay. Okay, what's this? That's so why I explain to people that when it comes to, even though like some people may not like the black screens, it might be too dark for some people. Some people may want a higher white level, and we have a gray screen. And one of the problems I see with gray screens out there on the market, they can't produce a good contrast level to save their soul. They just can't. It comes out gray. It comes out washed out. It has a kind of tannish look around the edges. It doesn't do well. And then the colors don't produce well. The colors are faded and they're washed out. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. So this is why we considered ourselves to have the best gray screen paint on the market. When it comes to gray category screen paints, yeah. Because like I said, I would love to see one demonstration of a gray screen doing the exact same demonstration I just did. Show me multiple different forms of certified screens, gray screens. Show me a difference in contrast levels and colors and blues and greens. Show me, show me a Starfield demonstration. I wanna see a screen that physically looks like it's black. That's why I did the Starfield demonstration on the black screen here and the Starfield. That's what I expect to see when somebody's gonna be talking about, oh yeah, but I can develop amazing green. When show me. So all you gotta do is show me, cause I can show you right here with no problem. And that screen is gray, and it's pulling up a black contrast level that looks like it's black. So anytime you wanna put a challenge out, knock yourself out. We have color coding technology. <laughs> the stuff y'all have now is not even close to that technology. I hate to laugh at it, but it's true. It's not. It's still bouncing off surfaces. You can't go beyond the surface. That's a perfect example right there. I'm gonna pause that. Look, that's a perfect example. Okay, that's a dark gray screen, not even close. Well, I'm gonna get out of here. This has been fun. Like I said, you know, those of you who support my company, I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you so much. For you naysayers out there who are constantly always hating, don't come on my channel running your mouth. Back it up. Put a link at the bottom. I'd like to see what you got. Other than that, you just all talk. That's all you are. And any other big company out there, multi-million dollar corporation or whatever you may be, it's just all talk to me. Because when I see all demonstrations and I've had big companies contact me and say, well, we got this screen in the works. Well, let me see what you got. Let me see if it matches any one of the demonstrations that we have over here. And I have yet to see a gray screen poor contrast level that dark. In a fully lit environment, and mind you, this is how far my projector sits back. Just so you know. I'm over 16 feet back in a fully lit environment, and I can pour contrast level on the screen. I'm a little curious here. I'm always a little curious. How dark is this contrast level? This is coming up. Two. Two. Black. This is one of the blackest screens we make. But I'm curious, side by side, next to each other. Wow. Okay. All right. That's impressive. So get this. This screen right here is our, um, is the black silver. That right there is a 17, right? That has this one of the blackest screens we ever developed. Now, if I were to put this on top of that screen, this screen would automatically turn gray. But side by side, when you look at the contrast level on the, um, on the gray, it is basically pulling a contrast level dark enough 
to be able to look like it could match that screen right there, but it wouldn't come close to matching it at all, period. Next to that screen, it would turn gray automatically. See what I mean? The code, it couldn't match that technology if it wanted to, because that screen is 100% black. Next to it, it can mimic black pretty good. It can mimic a black screen pretty good. Some technology grind. Let's have some fun real quick. All right, I'm out of here. This is fun. Usually, like I said, every once in a while, I'll remove the uh, restrictions for allowing people to talk. But keep in mind, as you come in with your comments, you are being monitored by YouTube and also monitored by me. All comments are being reviewed. So it will go before YouTube, just to let you know. All right? Just going to put that up real quick. Um, also, too, um, this is just, I still can't get over this, man. That contrast level is freaking absolutely beautiful. That's beautiful. But like I said, uh, for you naysayers, such if you feel you can do the same thing, I look forward to seeing your gray paint produce a contrast level that dark. That being said, I got to go and God bless.